Welcome to the Level Up Artist Podcast. We are your hosts, Adriana Amay and Jackie Sanders. We are two art professionals sharing forward the advice and business lessons we have learned along our creative journeys. We talk to artists, leaders, and art professionals to demystify the creative process and discover new ways to succeed as a career-minded artist. If you find these conversations valuable, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you'll be notified when we drop a new episode every Tuesday. So on today's episode, we're really excited to welcome Amber Echevarria. So she is a local artist here in our area. Uh, she's an artist, a muralist, and co-founder of Munja Munjo, a Latinx owned and operated retail shop in the middle of downtown Raleigh. In addition to Munjo branded gear, the studio produces and stocks products, products from various local independent artists, creators, especially highlighting women and BIPOC artists through collaborative works, live art events, and other opportunities. And Munjo, of course, is based on an adorable pop, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not here. I couldn't fit him on my bike backpack. So, uh. <laughs> Bummer. Otherwise, we try to have him on, uh, on video for, yeah. for those of you that watch this on video. He's what, a Pomeranian? Mm -hmm. A white pom-pom? Yeah, he's a little, uh, more like a dingy white. But <laughs> don't tell him that he's pure yeah. and clean and beautiful yeah of course <laughs> i know for those yeah. folks that are in our local area if you walk into Munja Munja, the, the store which is actually about a block away from art space where, where okay. studios are um absolutely precious because a lot of times he's right there in the store and he'll greet okay. for growl but <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely you welcome to just visit him anytime <laughs> yeah Either way, it's awesome because you like walk in and there's this big dingy white, like off white. Let's go yeah. with off white. Long yeah. white. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big floof ball that's just like, da, 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 like just walking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wrapped around. It's good if you bring food with you. You don't have to give him any, just holding it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he has to be on his best behavior, even the yeah. idea that he might get some treats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is absolutely hilarious and uh, I'm trying to think about when we met originally I'm thinking probably oh, did you work at Emerge at one point I did at I the mean, store right maybe I well, yeah like I, I kind of did that was a while ago later. yeah man maybe I, I feel like there been... a few times like I met you at our I think our old pop-up store yeah and then like out at first Friday after that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, like, there was like okay, a I'm Raleigh not... Times first Friday pop up event as well. Yeah. We hung out for a little bit on that, a few times on the store. New yeah, ones, ago. yeah, 19 ish around there because it was things were still happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was right, it was definitely before the pandemic for yeah. sure. Yeah, I feel like especially as creatives in the area, there's so many events or physical shops or things yeah. where like all of our paths cross. So yeah, you guys meeting in 2019 yeah. makes total sense. <laughs> Back when you guys can have events in person still. Um, yeah. And I have not made it to your store yet, but I am super excited too. Because um, <laughs> when did, yes, when did that physical location open, and how did you really like get started with like launching that physical store? Um. We opened the, like the old store, we had a little pop-up store, like half a block away. Um, in 2019, we opened that and it was supposed to be like a month or two. Um, they were going to tear the building down. So they let us rent it really cheap. It was very like raw and crappy and yeah, like, no air conditioning or heat. Um, <laughs> the start of every good success story. Yeah, it's perfect. But you know, we got Wi-Fi and that was all we really needed <laughs> to be able to function there. So. Honestly, in the modern day business, that's a huge thing. I think especially being able to have your business predominantly online and having a strong community yeah. of support, then from a physical location <laughs> standpoint, whether it's a pop-up or a physical store, once yeah. you have Wi-Fi and a good community around you, you can go really far. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was, uh, we'd been doing markets before that for a couple of years and that that is a it's fun but once you have like a taste of not having to unpack everything and pack it up for a few hours yep like oh man it's I was like I'm never going back to this like I still want to do events but not every single time that I was off work or yeah. every weekend or especially in the summer 
oh yeah the summer is uh really lovely to do outdoor yeah <laughs> ac goes a long way for oh yeah i spent one event in like the bathroom it was like a trailer of bathrooms but with air conditioning and i was like well i'm gonna go sit in the bathroom trailer somewhere, <laughs> like by the sink and just cool off again yeah it's so empty you got especially yeah and especially if it is a slow event like you were saying because you're like i'm out here in the heat yeah. is this even worth it why did i lug all my stuff out here but you really don't know like there's so many factors for in-person markets whether it's like the weather whether it's other events going on yeah. or like that could be your most profitable day and you make insane yeah. sales you don't want to discount it mm -hmm. but also there are those days where At some you, point, have, you know it's not gonna yeah <laughs> You're like, I see the signs, but then there's a huge rush of people the last 30 <laughs> minutes of the event. And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> exactly. that's huge. So you start in a semi-permanent, not semi-permanent, but like a longer term yeah. pop-up. Yeah. How'd you transition from that to your current location? Um, so we, well, we were in that space um, and we ended up there through like 2020. Um, and, you know, uh, we had a lot of protests and a lot of issues downtown during that time and so downtown was basically aborted up like yeah kind of like empty there's nothing down here going on really there's like coffee maybe a few coffee shops open during the day and you better get out of here at night because it was empty it was like a ghost town yeah so we and every time there was like talk of another protest or something our building owners would like board up the place and not tell us so we'd show up for like friday for the weekend to like open and we're like oh cool we're boarded up again and the whole block is empty again so Dang, we just decided yeah. like do we just put everything in storage for a while and just kind of you know see how things go in the meantime to save money on the rent or what should we do and the corner we're in the corner space right uh next to like the coffee shop and restaurant that i've been working at for quite a while so i kind of knew like who to ask about it and i had actually before if, like at the end of 2019 I kind of like emailed just for just for shits and giggles like you know hey uh just curious what you're doing with that empty space that's been empty and I didn't really hear anything back so I thought you know like that's fine I didn't really expect to be taken seriously yeah at the time but uh around like June or July we got an email back that was like hey ready to talk <laughs> I was like, yeah. well, I mean, maybe we do that instead. And we just, I don't know, go for it. Like, we'll see how it plays out. And a few months later, we ended up moving in here. It was like October. So people were a little bit coming out more, mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, things weren't like so closed up, but, you know, you still, uh, I think everything was still to go at the coffee shop next door. Yeah. Stuff like that, but. Yeah, we just, and we, uh, we did like a temporary commitment there. I said, I'm not signing anything in this currently. Like I have to see how things go. Like I can't promise I'll have money for you in six months still for rent. So they let us do like a few months through like the holiday season. And then it was like month to month after that for just until we were like ready to commit and sign on and get the whole space. Cause we really rented only part of it temporarily that's how yeah. we people that we could afford so yeah yeah that's <laughs> how, that's up, so. yeah I love that story especially for like the beginning of a physical location because obviously <laughs> you coming in from that in-person market mindset you knew okay maybe wanting something more permanent and then after working at the coffee shop and restaurant knowing the area very well you understand the foot traffic of people in 2019, knowing <laughs> the benefit of this corner space that's been yeah. kind of like off the market for a while, or like no one's been in there mm -hmm. and using your network to you're like, I see this opportunity for like, what would happen if I could have a store there? And then taking that plunge, even if it felt like a total leap of faith, <laughs> like knowing who to email, using your network and your connections that you've built to like, take that leap of faith and send that email. What's the worst that could happen yeah. is they don't respond right? or they say or no. And then you actually know, but then even from there, mm -hmm. like really once they said, okay, we actually need people in here because it's the middle of 2020 and everyone yeah. was in crazy 
um, social and financial situations then, but still proceeding with caution too. I love that you were able to really see that. (laughs) All right, let's kind of do a test run. Let's do a three to six months, not sign a 10 year lease because you never know what's going to happen in the next month, three months, six months, especially in the fall of 2020. So I feel like that was a really good strategic decision too, even if it felt like (laughs) maybe playing it safe a little bit, but I feel like that was really the smart play that time of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so bold because it's like, it almost translates for those folks that instead of having a store, have a studio, it's very similar. It's like, will we have enough to pay our studio rent? And you're signing a contract and going, (laughs) <laughs> please, 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 you know, I hope things work out and I can sell enough of my artwork unless you have another job or another financial situation. But if that is your job, then it's like, uh oh, here we go. Now, obviously, you I know you've worn a lot of hats. So I do want to ask you, we'll dive more into the, the store part of it, because obviously that's fascinating. And um, I personally don't know a lot of artists that also run a store like that's that's huge. But I do want to ask you about the art life part of it mm-hmm. first um so I know you've painted murals you've done screen printing I've seen some of those workshops I've seen those like pizza box collabs you create art <laughs> yeah. products like you are busy like you are <laughs> always drinking where do you get inspiration from um that's your pup pup who's absolutely adorable right yeah he's found his way onto a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> but man really just like probably a lot of music and I ride my bike a lot. So I like to go and just listen to music and ride and, you know, just take in the nature, hopefully. (laughs) So I don't have to go on the streets too much, but um, yeah, just, uh, I don't know, maybe like somewhat like just the shapes and colors are like things that I'll see. Like one time I went through a tunnel and it was really like small and a bird zooped in like with me. And I was like, yeah, this is why I ride my bike. Like we just are like following each other for a minute. It sounds really weird. No, it but, doesn't. You That's know, just cool. like weird stuff like that. And I just like to put on music and like sit and doodle and see what weird shapes come out of it sometimes and kind of go from there. <laughs> Yeah. So you kind of use it as like a meditative, meditative, like rest for your brain, like whatever happens, happens. Like it's not too planned out long-term, but it's, Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what makes it so cohesive too. Yeah. They're all kind of linked. Yeah. Yeah. And are you doing this like a, like a traditional sketchbook or digital Uh, or a combination of the two? So I pretty much did like Sharpies for everything for the longest time until Last year, I spent all my savings on an iPad. Oh, and now because otherwise, I travel and like I have like two giant Ziploc bags of Sharpies, you know, and a big old book. And I, like, I don't like to check my luggage, so <laughs> struggle to pack all that shit in your So, true. This iPad was like a game changer for being able to like go do, you know, take it on a bike ride and go set up in a park or something for a yep. minute. And, Oh, yep. I'm done. okay, close it up and go. I don't have to like gather all my stuff back up and have a heavy yeah. bag with me. Definitely. Yeah. Amber, you are yeah. preaching to the choir on this <laughs> podcast because I still sketch with Sharpies <laughs> and I just love that like bold, crisp line. Yeah. And easily for a year and a half, Adriana's like, well, so what about an iPad? What about sketching on an iPad? Because that's super <laughs> prominent in her uh, creative practice. We've talked about on other episodes. And I'm just like, I need to make the transition. I know functionally it makes so much sense. And I feel like even I just, because you're an artist that makes a lot of um, different like merch and stickers and like t-shirts out of your designs, it makes so much sense because you're, you don't have to then digitize your hand drawings. They're already there, ready to upload, to be printed (laughs) and ready to go. So I love that you really recognize that, like, how can I streamline this part of my creative practice <laughs> and from your business too. How can I like save myself time because yeah. I don't have to digitize all your in-person sketches or, yeah. oh crap, I left this loose piece of paper <laughs> at the store, but I'm home or I have, like, worrying about spilling stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So just, uh, that helps a lot. <laughs> 
and then that's that awesome. Can, like, back it up because you know the sharpies. Once you go, you make a line. You're stuck with it, and yep. I enjoy that. But it's nice to like actually draw like a bear the way I want it because I could erase it and not have to draw it 80 more times. Yeah, not have to start completely over. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if you have a specific color palette or you're going to propose a mural, it makes it so much easier if it's already digital, and then you can just yeah. Photoshop overlay it. Yeah. And then like make your proposal. And I mean, it's just easier. And if they say, well, actually, I don't like that color. Can you change it? You don't have to redo it. It's just super easy to do digitally. Like, oh, you don't like the yellow bears. You want lime green. Okay, sure. Give me like three seconds. Boom, boom, boom. They're all green now. Right. Like, so much easier. Oh my gosh. So much easier. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so obviously as both an artist yourself and a creative, but also someone who owns this store and is in the day-to-day -day function of that store. Um, do you find it difficult sometimes to transition from that creative artist mindset to that selling public facing mindset? And like, what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it, it is hard. Like luckily Jamie and I <clears throat> are usually here together. So um, like if I'm working on something or he's working on something like the other can more kind of handle like talking to the people or checking somebody out um so that's handy but like if I'm I can't really like sit there and really draw if people are in the store like once they come in I kind of like I might still like just do it just to not be like staring at them yeah <laughs> like I'm not really doing working on anything useful at that point like yeah layer for that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's definitely one thing that like anyone who has like worked in retail or especially if you're like the one person working at a store or in your studio when guests come in, it's like, yeah. okay, I want to be here and like present if they have questions, yeah. but I don't want to hover over them. So I want to give them space, but not too much space. So they think I'm just like ignoring them. <laughs> It's yeah. a tough balance. You just like, I'm going to yeah. act like I'm organizing this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. act like, like I'm doing this. I'll like shuffle stuff around or like yeah, things like that. Or like, you know, like, oh, I'm just, uh, just opening these books over and over. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, hey, I'm here if you have any questions, but I'm not going to bother you. So right. Like, tell them all so that they know, like, feel free. But yeah, I feel like that alone is like an art form of itself. We talk about that all the time at art space of like, yeah. but you also want people to like make their own opinions when it comes to artwork or even like art merchandise and art yeah. products of like, do I want this? Do I see this in this person's home? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to feel like you're like convincing someone into no. like having to buy it, but also I'm not able to do that. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, but there might be it. like a story or a meaning that like might yeah. connect with them that like it'd be helpful for them to know. Yeah. And so it's such a hard balance. <laughs> I know. I always want to like write all the notes like on some little like, you know, like price signs or something. If I make like a little card for it, like and I'm like, this is too much info. No one's going to read this. No, I'll just have to keep it in my head. Yeah. yeah. And then if they ask, then you can elaborate more on it. Yeah. 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 So what is that like creative versus working at the store balance look like for you from like a weekly schedule or like an yeah. hourly? Um, so we're pretty much open like Thursday through Sunday. So during like store hours, pretty much not creative time necessarily yeah um, I do like some little things that I can do like like they draw up some like sketchbook covers that I can do like if someone's there it's an easy you know if I already know what I'm drawing <laughs> like I can do that while someone's there but that's like about the extent of it is like a five ten minute little thing on a cover <laughs> um so it's more just like I do like more of the admin kind of stuff or like ordering things or you know, forgetting to email people <laughs> during the store hours and then uh, like the days off um, or after before sometimes I'll just go and I'll try to like go to a coffee shop somewhere else or just a different setting or sometimes upstairs, depending how broke yeah. I am that week. <laughs> I'm going to do the studio coffee. <laughs> it's been in the fridge for a month, but no, not that much. <laughs> It's not oh. that bad. I have some coffee standards. Okay. okay. But, you know. I was yeah. going to say, having worked at a coffee shop, I'm sure you have pretty good coffee standards. Though. It's true, but I still love the coffee at my grandma's house that's like been in the tin in the fridge for 
you know, yeah. how many months, maybe longer? Just don't question it. It's <laughs> fine. No, really good. So, yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's aged. It's aged. Yeah. Finally aged. Exactly. That's, ab- that's absolutely hilarious. Well, yeah. so for those creatives that are like perhaps struggling, whether it's to devote any time to say like the admin or work side of it versus the creative mm-hmm. side or vice versa, they'll do the creative side and forget the admin or <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. Do you have, what would you be your top tip for avoiding burnout if you're like either diving in too deep on one or the other and just trying to keep some semblance of balance? I for sure, I'm like a Google calendar, like without it, Yes. I would be very free, but I would be forgetting everything. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, I have like kind of, I have like repeating schedules on there of like blocks of time that are like go somewhere and work on projects and go somewhere and work on like you need to do the tax stuff or whatever. So like I definitely try to like plot it out and ahead of time. But like if I need to shuffle it, that's fine. I'll just move like I have to move it to another place. Like I'm not allowed to delete my block of like paying the bills and stuff, <laughs> but I can always like adjust the time. Um, so just, yeah, I think like making sure to schedule your creative time a little bit or, you know, and like leaving gaps so that you're not like, oh, okay, time's up, gotta go, you know, and like do switch gears now, like just have it, have it there, but be flexible <laughs> enough to know like, okay, I've, been doing this too long (laughs) yeah I really like that so do you have do you tell I mean do you set it up where you're like okay three days a week for example I have a two-hour block of just creative time no pressure what it is whether it's an Mm -hmm. existing project or a new one but I'm not scheduling meetings I'm not working on the website or doing the store I need to have a certain amount of time yeah I pretty much I try to do like Monday and Tuesday where like uh for a few hours at least this week's weird but I say that and then like tomorrow I'm gonna work an election so I won't do anything fun (laughs) but um yeah just like I'll try to leave like those two days kind of mostly open and I will try not to ideally not open my computer because then I get stuck down the hole of like well let's plot out how I'm gonna pay for this next week and (laughs) so I try to like leave my computer away from me the best I can for those times at least uh, or make myself go somewhere where I don't want to bring the computer. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will totally go to a bar by myself on, like, a Tuesday and, like, sit Word. on the patio and draw for, like, two hours, so. Yes, um, I love that. Fun. I think especially when it comes to, like, yeah, just, like, physically drawing. I don't know about you, but for those experiences, <laughs> like, I'll do the same thing. Go to, like, a coffee shop or, like, there's a whiskey bar near my house that I love, and I'll go and, like, take my color pencils and my Sharpies and my notebook. And it's so funny, the like looks you get in almost the best way. Cause people are so intrigued. They're like, wait, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just drawing. And like, it's, I think, especially for adults, like it's so out of the norm of a possibility of like how people can spend their time. It's like, Oh, I'm just like being creative and drawing. And it like, it is, I think a good reminder for like the people around you too, of like, being able to slow down and enjoy those little things that I think is, I think what the quote unquote normal non-artist type, which I feel like everyone's an artist in their own way, but it's a good reminder of like, I think why they then connect with visual artists so well is it kind of inspires them or makes them think about, you know, this is a possibility of how you, you can spend your time, whether you're good at it, whether you're not, whether you make it a business or whether you just enjoy it. It's a, possibility of how you can spend your time and relax and like check into that side of your brain totally. yeah <laughs> I do find it funny though the kind of questions that they ask or something <laughs> be like did you do that I'm sorry I have the pencil or pen or paintbrush <laughs> right in my hand with the thing I just painted or created and you yeah. just said that I do that no <laughs> you see me there for 20 minutes and it's still wet and they're like wait what you drew this and you're like maybe it was me yeah. I don't I don't know I don't know I, I find this I find this funny I try to go to places that are a little more deserted for that reason yeah. that's why so, is the best because like 
it's not those people out that are like, oh, you should make this this color. Like, bro, I'm good. Back off. Right. <laughs> or they'll be like, oh, my niece's uncle's oh, God. neighbor makes art. It's so good. You have to see it. And then they spend 10 minutes scrolling through their phone oh, to try to find oh. the one photo to show in here. And it's not uh, even that good. I know. So, you're like, they're 10. Like, that's a. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Good. Which on the bright side, I mean, we're sounding grumbly, but on the bright side, it's like, good. At least they are making stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everyone should do it a little yeah, bit. Everybody should make art. But yeah, that's but, that's where yeah. I tend to go to places like I'll go to pull in before the train starts running <laughs> and all the kids and the family start showing yeah. up and it's deserted. There's only runners and they don't care what you're doing. They're not going to stop right. running to see what you're sketching. <laughs> So I like them. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I keep going and I'll exercise vicariously for you. I sketch. So this yeah. works out. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's kind of like, like you were saying when you were in the store and then trying to sketch, it's like a different part of your brain that you're able to tap into when you're yeah. able to fully be present with your creative practice. Mm-hmm. We're like situations like that, where if you are at a coffee shop or a bar or a restaurant and drawing and like people are interrupting you, mm-hmm. you, it's almost, at least for me, it's like, I love cheerleading on other creatives. I love if people come to art space for first Friday and tell me about <laughs> the drama club they were in, in middle school and like, or like, Oh, like I would love to do watercolor. Maybe I should give that a shot. Yes. Do it. Like inspiring others. Mm-hmm. but. If I'm trying to get into the zone, that is the number one most frustrating thing is any interruptions. <laughs> like Adriana will tell you and like my studio neighbors, like if I'm really in the zone, I'm like, I have my door closed, my blinds are down, <laughs> headphones in. And even if I know that someone might be getting my attention, I'm like, don't disrupt my energy. Don't disrupt my energy. Don't it's going to take me 30 minutes to get it back. <laughs> and like, I love you. And I'll talk to you after my painting session. But like, this is for me. And so don't interrupt me. Mm-hmm. And that's a little hard to come off and do when you're sitting in public. So it's definitely a different vibe. Yeah. Like yeah, don't make eye contact. Just, help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. just focus where the headphones. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So I don't think that we've really, really talked about this part yet. And I do want to bring it, you know, back to the, you know, talking about your store. So tell me if this is the right way to describe it. So in your store, you have, there's a very specific aesthetic that you're going for, right? I feel like there's some 80s vibes, 80s, <laughs> 90s vibes, uh, some punk, some skateboarder, like, you know, yeah. thing going on, um, even some Japanese influence. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, way. <laughs> no way. No way. Uh, all in, obviously, in good fun, right? But that you know, actually, would you add anything to that before I keep going? I think so. Maybe think that's like a uh, fair enough. Pretty much. We have a little bit of like graffiti style. We have one artist that does a lot of very like street art, kind of like more traditional graffiti style looking stuff that I always have to shake him down and be like, you got to bring more stuff, man. It's already sold. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a great problem to have both for him and for <laughs> you. But I feel like as a store owner, that's like a big thing of keeping yeah. inventory and obviously having artists that you highlight in your store that can keep bringing you more pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And where I'm going with this is like, so you have this like very specific urban, you know, type aesthetic. This is not um, coastal store, store selling seashells yeah. to tourists situation. You know what, where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a very specific, like, I love it, right? I have a few like Munjo <laughs> items myself. So that means that you have to have like fans, like to keep the lights on. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a specific group of people that are going to be very attracted to your work. So with yeah. that, what I want to ask is like, okay, you have different events, collabs, opportunities, mm-hmm. uh, staying in contact with buyers, potential collectors, you know, the, those <laughs> folks that are like, I can't wait till you release any shirt design. Mm-hmm. How do you stay in contact with them and how do you stay organized? And so we do have an email list. In the past, we used it like twice a year. Now no, I'm like, because we don't want to bother. I don't want people to open it and be like, God, another email from them. Like, so annoying. So like we tried to, avoid doing it but then I was like man like we have this new stuff like 
we got to tell them about it or, you know, yeah. they come in, they're like, what? And they don't have my size anymore. Like, yeah. Cause they're like, I wish I knew when it launched three weeks ago, yeah, I would yeah. try to get my so, size. Yeah. So we do use that, um, now, but we also have a Patreon that is like, uh, I don't know. What do we call it? It's Munjo's sticker club. Kind oh, of cool. Thing, but it's like, so we send, we do like a sticker every month for them. Um, and a postcard. Like we'll usually do the sticker design and then the postcard features like um, another artist of some sort. Um, yeah. Typically women and or BIPOC. It gets priority basically. Um, and we've basically been doing that by invitation, but we just made a form for, cause I know we don't know everybody that's out there of course. And like, so we've made a, finally a way to apply for it. Cause people always want to know like, like how do I get my stuff? and. I'm like, oh, I gotta fill out a form. I can't do this in person. Yeah. <laughs> or like you I think especially having that like concrete form of like fill out the information because a conversation yeah. can be great. You can make an awesome <laughs> connection. Mm-hmm. But three days later, I don't know about yeah. you, but I'm like, <laughs> it's a completely different world three days yeah. later. Like I, I cannot be expected <laughs> to remember this one minutia detail. Mm-hmm. And then the second you go to make new postcards, you're like, I instantly forget everyone that I ever have met yeah. and ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that goes, so Patreon is like, um, I don't know if you guys have used it much or whatever, but it's like a paid subscription yep. kind of thing. Yeah. So we have like a $2 level. That's just like, yeah, I love it. I want to know about the stuff first um and that's that's pretty much about it for like the base level and then there's like a five or seven dollar level where it's a sticker and a postcard Mm. and then there's a higher one where it's double of those so you get two and two because I know there's a lot of people we know that are like couples and stuff so yeah um yeah so that one like those people get like when we have something new coming out we'll let them know about it before anyone else so they get dibs on like sizes and stuff Um, in the past we've done like a custom color we're like we're ordering this if you want this design on one of these like other colors like let us know and we'll put it in for you kind of a thing but we probably offer that as a as a standard thing oh that's awesome it's like an exclusive perk you can somewhat customize it but you're like okay you have to have it in by this date yeah, because we're much. putting the order like a but order. Yeah. a bulk of them are all going to be black with the design but if you want blue <laughs> let us know before we place the order which is exactly. on this day yeah, yeah. so that That's that cool. list is like it started off with like one person on it and then i think we got a few more after like our windows were broken during one everyone's yeah. windows were broken and then we we're like oh shit like now we really have to do it because we didn't have anyone before you know before it was just kind of like nobody was on it we hadn't really pushed it or anything I right don't know how the people found it to be honest like at that time because we weren't really like pushing it really running with it yet so yeah but it's uh that group is grown. I think we have like 30 something now people. that's awesome so and they're all like some of them we know like personally before and some of them we've just gotten to know from that um So, and some of them are not really sure who they are. So yeah, that was going to be my next question of like, how, um, have you like grown that list? Do you feel like it's been mostly Um, word of mouth or now you starting to like market and highlight that group? We kind of have been marketing it. Like we made little, uh, like small little three by four cards, like kind of explaining it vaguely so that if things change in it, we're not stuck with a thousand cards. Um, Yeah. But we pretty much, yeah, if people buy like a lot of stickers and or postcards, we'll make sure we give them, we should be giving it to everyone, but sometimes I don't think to put it in the bag. So um, <laughs> I'm trying to add it to all the bags in advance now. So yeah. Forget because later I'm like, oh shit, I should have given them one. <laughs> well, and you're hand decorating the bags with Sharpies. We, we print them though. Oh, we, we had well, to, I think I have one of your last me. Sharpie ones. I do when I run I out of the printed ones. I have some in the big bags. I do it just because it's such a big thing. I can't Exclusive. It. Yeah. But yeah. It was just, we, once we moved in here, we were going through them so fast. I was spending <laughs> all day, like three days yeah. a week here, like drawing freaking bears on bags. And I was like, this is silly. Like I have other things yeah. to do. <laughs> So, there definitely is a point where like you want to build like that personal con- collect. I know I love doing it. But... Yeah, that personal connection to all of your guests, but yeah. it's not exactly scalable because then yeah. your full-time job is making the bags, 
that you yeah. give away with each individual sale. Right? But yeah. I do like draw, do new drawings. So every time we reorder, I'll do a different drawing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Them, so not just like the name only, you know. So. Yeah. That's so fun. And I feel like it's that kind of like personal touches that like mm -hmm. shop local feel that people really connect with. And I'm sure that's been something that has brought your consistent visitors coming back time and time again, or even they recognize, even if they might not purchase something with the visit, oh, they have new bags this time. And then yeah. instilling in that is like, oh, well, next time I come in, it might be even different. Yeah. Um, so do you have any tips for someone who is trying to really cultivate a collector base, whether for a physical store, or maybe they just have a series of art products or their original artwork of any tips for really fine tuning or honing in on who their audience is or the, who their collector base is? Yeah. Um, I would say definitely, I hate to be like, oh, get a paid thing. Cause it, it feels like, you know, like, oh, I'm just grabbing money, but it's not really like that stuff that we get. Like we pay the people that do art at the postcards and stuff. Yeah. So that, like we don't really get any, like, we don't really get anything. It like funds the payment to them and the production essentially at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, and that's fine, but something like that, like if you can make kind of a little community in a way, it doesn't even have to be paid. Like you can have a free level on there as long as, yeah. but then you've got to get the people to go there. So, you know, right. you got to start with like the social media. I know, I know. <laughs> like Instagram, I guess TikTok, but I hate making, I don't, I don't make TikTok. <laughs> Jamie's probably, he has to do it. <laughs> But um, yeah, TikTok is not my, I'm not going to dance or, uh, you know, yeah, a, a volunteer video. <laughs> like, hey guys, like that's not going to happen for me. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Um, but you're really saying like, go for it. But, yeah, but you're really saying like, kind of have entry points so people can follow mm -hmm. you no matter yeah. what their commitment level to your brand or to your product, whether they mm -hmm. quote unquote, just want to follow you on social media or they maybe want to be part of a more exclusive group, but it's still free. Maybe that, I mean, especially for you guys, that might be okay. You get to learn about new art products and you can mm -hmm. order custom ones and the custom colors before we order, but you're not paying consistently each month yeah. or then having a $3 Patreon option or $5. Yeah. If people want to continuously support you. Yeah. You got to make it accessible. You know, they might yeah. not have the money now, but they want to keep up with it and like we've had people who like, you know, they, whatever, lost their job for a while and we're like, hey, like I'm canceling it, but it's, it's because of like money situations. And we're like, that's yeah. fine. And we still sent them like everything for that packet, you know, cause we were like, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like we're not stressing that hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Find whatever community you can, if it's in person or, you know, online, like I hate doing online stuff. Like I didn't watch any online concerts or any. I was just like, oh, I don't want to watch it <laughs> the whole time. Oh, you mean during 2020? Like, yeah, like video. I was just like, oh, that's nice. But <laughs> like, like, it just no. make me more mad that I wasn't there watching it. <laughs> so yeah, like whatever you can, you know, you just got to find whatever fits like your people. You got to find your people and then start there and build on <laughs> I like and that because that, that find your people is essentially like if you're being authentic to what you really are with any quirks or fun bits about you that set you apart, then that naturally attracts other people that are like you or gravitate towards that. Yeah. And then it's just like, I don't know, it just feels like home, you know, when you start, you know, feeling that. And then it's like once you meet a few, then they know other people too. And then it just keeps growing. I don't know. I just exactly. feel yeah, you just can't expect too much in the beginning. You know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and I like to like uh, you know, bringing back to something from earlier. It's not that you're trying to appeal to everybody either and doing, you know, coastal art for tourists, you know, just yeah, tongue in no. cheek saying <laughs> that, but um you're basically like following the things that you're passionate about and then naturally attracting the people that follow that too. But with that, as you know, we get towards the end, I do want to ask you, um, this is something we ask everybody, okay. how do you define success as an artist, not just as a business owner, because that comes with a different set of metrics, mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah. as an entrepreneur, if we can call you that, I think that's appropriate. <laughs> um, how would you define success? 
I don't know. It feels cheesy to say, but like just uh, just having the freedom to like do stuff that makes you happy, even if it's like me, like riding my bike. Like if I don't have time to ride my bike, I'm getting mad. I'm also probably snacking too much. <laughs> um, but like just being able to have like the freedom to do the stuff that you enjoy and like without the stress of like worrying about like the next sale, you know, like so if I'm at a point where like you know I don't necessarily have to have like tons of money but like just enough that I don't have to like I can pay rent I can buy food you know the kind of the basics and then I have time to like just spend doing whatever I want basically that makes sense yeah that makes total sense yeah I mean it'd be nice to have plenty of money so I can (laughs) hit the road and travel but well let's go to Japan next weekend you know have a little extra money hanging around Trying. I'm saving those pennies for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Not alone in this. I already had a talk in my yeah. household of like Japan needs to be put. We need to put a date on that. Yeah, exactly. But that's a lot of money that needs to be saved. That is not a cheap country to go to. Yeah. <laughs> one more question. Um. So, what is one piece of advice that you wish you had heard before you got started on your creative yeah. journey? Hmm. Um, I think like, it doesn't hurt to ask like for what you want or need. I think I, I heard somebody like somebody said that like a year or two ago after we'd already been in here. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Like it's true. Like they, they asked somebody about buying a building, you know, and they kind of whatever rejected or whatever. But I was like, you, you asked this person like just randomly on the street. Yeah. You know, it feels like, man, you know what? So I've tried to hold on to that a little bit more. Like, like if there's something that I want to do or we want to try something, like, just ask around and put it out there. (laughs) Um, And don't be shy about, like, saying, like, putting it out there what you want or need for something, you know? Like, I say it all the time. Like, yeah, I need a place to do screen printing. (laughs) Like, hope that somebody will be like, I have a place right here. I'm like, oh, perfect. Or they know someone that knows someone that might have a place. Just put it out in the world and see what happens. Exactly. I really want to have like a print co-op of some sort Mm -hmm. because I want to screen print again, but I don't want to do it full time. Yeah. You know, like I know that I can't do my own place just for that. It's too much. So yeah. Join forces. Are you talking to some of the local printmakers? Um, a few. I know a little bit, a little here and there. Oh, here and there so maybe something will come out of that like low-key until I have the money to really jump into it and then I'll like go harder but in the meantime just like dipping your out. toe yeah like just a little we'll let you know we'll let you know if we hear anything all right yeah, yeah. absolutely that would be really cool well last yeah. question for you yeah. if uh you had a hundred bucks just hand it oh. out to you what would you splurge it on or invest it in Needs to be something that brings you joy and relates to your art or business. Um, I already know because I almost ordered stuff I don't have money for yesterday. <laughs> um, What's the bit in your shopping cart right now? Basically, yeah, it's probably it might. I hope it's still there. <laughs> um, I really want to order like custom fabric from Spoonflower. Yes, I'm, I'm not a seamstress. I've like played around with like stitching random patterns. You know, like, but I, if I, I think if I had some fabric that I was excited to use, I would sit down and like actually try to make something. It might just be a bandana, which is just four sides. Yeah. But yeah, I think if I do that, I would, because I enjoy doing it a little bit. I just haven't had the experience with it. Um, and I don't want to make it with like whatever this garbage fabric is that I have laying around the house for like five years. Um, so I think if it was like this is my art on a freaking fabric like it would be very exciting and then I would let be in trouble and I want to learn how to make stuff for ourselves versus just printing so it'll, yeah. Yeah, well, and my mind goes straight to like a dog bandana with your <laughs> uh, amber bear design yes. like and there's so <laughs> many people especially in downtown that are walking around with their dogs I'm just you don't oh, yeah. have to send me a royalty, but you're I know, welcome. right. We have, yeah, I actually just figured out on Procreate how to make like repeating patterns. 
Yeah. So that was the last two days. I was like, I'm just making these crazy patterns, doodles, and they're not for anything, but um, maybe I'll order some fabric with that. Yeah. And Spoonflower <laughs> also has some settings to help you with that if you want to mirror them or. I know. That's what I was playing with last night. And I was like, Amber, you're not going to do anything with this fabric for the next week. Like, too many things going. So, like, I was like, but I made a repeating pattern. I want to make fabric. <laughs> Well, if you need a seamstress suggestion, let me know. Oh, yeah. okay. I know a few people here at Art Space okay. that do sewing, although they may not do it like that, but maybe they would be open yeah. to a collab. But yeah. also know a seamstress. She's based out of Durham, and she's okay. the sort that's willing to take on smaller projects. Yeah. And you just kind of tell her, like, I have this crazy idea, and I don't know how to make it. And she'll be like, oh, this is easy. Boom, boom, boom. What yeah. color zipper do you want? What color this do you want? Da, 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 da. And need. like is willing to make smaller amounts of things. So it doesn't have to yeah. be large order. So need some like trial things. I need some dresses with pockets that have some kind of mujo thing all over them instead of just a little print. So. All right. I'll send you her info. All right. Same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send it over on DM. Um, all right. But with that. Yeah. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Amber, for joining well, us today. Um, we've really enjoyed this conversation, and I'm sure our uh, listeners and our uh, YouTube audience does too. So thank you so much for joining us. Yay. Thanks, guys. I'll, I'll send you a video of Munjo later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. And real quick before you hop off, um, we were curious what upcoming events, projects, or opportunities are you looking forward to? And where can our listeners stay in contact with you after this episode airs? Um, for me personally, my Instagram is hello amber, like, like amber, but bear. That <laughs> yeah. um, or Munjo Munjo on Instagram. Uh, it's just two of us. So I will sure be sure to see any messages. <laughs> um, man, I don't have any certain projects that I can there's nothing the set yet, but we're working on bringing the basement battle back. Um, Ooh, awesome! Live art battles, so I just don't have a set date or anything yet. I can yeah. tell you. <laughs> well, so, people can go ahead and follow you on Instagram or sign up for your newsletter or your Patreon account, um, yeah. which will <laughs> all be linked in the show notes, so they can hear all about these upcoming events that you have going. <laughs> oh, that's perfect! And if you want to stay connected with us in between episodes share what you have learned um you can follow us on social media i'm at amay art across all platforms and i'm at j sander studio on all platforms or if you want to follow the podcast we are at level up artists on instagram thank you so much for listening we'll talk to you next week <laughs>